Time for us to take a look at the wallet that was found at the scene of the crime. Apparently, the wallet is empty, except for a passport. That certainly is an interesting question. Oh no! The passport belongs to the murder victim! So now that makes Edgeworth look rather guilty, because he has the passport that belongs to the victim. Looks like we get a new piece of testimony. Wait. Well, that doesn't make sense. I already see the flaw in this testimony. Edgeworth wouldn't kill in order to steal money from the victim. Remember the crime scene, everybody? Hold on, let me go to the statement about Edgeworth trying to steal something. If you just take another look at the crime scene, you'll notice there is money all over the floor, so Edgeworth couldn't have possibly tried to rob this man. This is simple enough, just highlight some of the money. It's okay, you're forgiven as soon as you take off the handcuffs. Okay, so we are free, and now we are going to investigate the crime scene. We're on a plane, so I suppose it makes perfect sense that somebody speaks in wing beans.
So we have an angry foreigner on board the plane. And he happens to be an art dealer. Interesting information. Okay, so now we know when the murder occurred. Very useful information for our investigation. Yes, a fine glass of grape juice. Ah, a cell phone. Okay. Don't worry though, folks. Even though Edward said testimony, we are not going to cross-examine this witness at this time. Later on, he's going to uh, testify about seeing the victim go to the scene of the crime. But for now, we need to examine the scene of the crime and get evidence which we can use to debunk his testimony. All right! However, the captain says she has to be there at all times to make sure he doesn't destroy any evidence. Sounds simple enough. We can exit through the left, and that way we get to the crime scene. 